something like that. No, just kidding. Yeah, I'll be 15. Happy Lord's Day. Happy Lord's Day. My name is Ross, and I'm a member here at Bethany Baptist Church. Because man must not live on bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, there's a black hardcover Bible in the seat in front of you. Um, the page number will be 1037. Once again, that's Ephesians chapter 2. Hear God's words. <clears throat> he did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the word of the Lord dwell richly within us. Let's pray. Father, you are so good in that you reconciled us to yourself through the cross, through Christ, that you reconcile us to each other. Lord, you are so good for that. Help us taste and see your goodness and your grace and your mercy through this truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So th there's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of conflict within children. I see it all the time. I remember when I was a kid, I would uh, have a toy, and if someone took my toy, I would be very upset that they took my toy because that's my toy. In the same way, this is not just for children. We see that even now around the world with Ukraine. There's war. There's just conflict everywhere. There's conflict externally. There's, there's even conflict internally. In ourselves, we feel this conflict within us of wanting to do something and being unable to do it at times, trying our hardest and yet not making the results that we want. There's conflict everywhere. And yet there's good news here in the midst of the conflict. God speaks to this conflict and he gives us good news. So the main goal today is that you would remember your reconciliation, that you would remember your reconciliation. So let's look down with me at verse 16. He did this. So whenever we see a phrase like that, we, we want to figure out who the pronoun is. So who's the he? All right, if we go back up to verse 15, we see another he there. So we got to go up a little further. Verse 14, there's another he there for he. Um, and then when you go to verse 13, that's where we see the he, right? But now in Christ Jesus, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So that's the he that he's talking about in verse 16. The he is Christ Jesus. So he did this. What is the this? This is... If you go to verse 14, for he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. That's what he did, right? He is our peace. And what he did was he made both groups, the two groups were the Jews and the Gentiles. He made them one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. So he did that for what purpose, right? So that he might reconcile both to God in one body. That was the purpose. All right, so what did he do? He brought these two groups and he brought them into one. And what is the purpose that we see in this text? To reconcile both to God. That's right. To reconcile both to God. So to reconcile both of them toward God. All right, so the idea of this text really is reconciliation. That's what we're seeing. All right, initially, before that, we're seeing reconciliation between two groups. And the purpose of that reconciliation between the two groups is towards God, right? The reconciliation of the two groups serves the purpose of reconciling them to God. So one is actually subservient to the other. So, for example, um, we see that throughout the Old Testament, there's been a lot of conflict between the Jews and the Gentiles, or between Israel and the Gentiles, right? Israel has conflict with Egypt. Is Israel has conflict with all the people in the Promised Land that they have to conquer. Israel had conflict with Rome at the time, um, and they're domineering in the way they're conquering them. And in that conflict, what Jesus does is Jesus makes these two groups that are in conflict, and he brings them together 
and makes them one in Christ, right? And what we see here is that oneness in Christ is actually to serve the purpose of making them one so that they can be one not only in Christ, but also one with God. So that's the purpose. Give me one second as I look. And so the application we see here is that our rec the reconciliation between humanity, between the Gentiles and the Jews, they actually serve the purpose of our reconciliation between Christ, right? And so the application for Bethany Baptist Church is that the reconciliation for us, even as members within the church of the body of Christ, is not primarily between us members, but between us and God. You see, when we sin against one another, our primary problem isn't our sin against one another, but the primary problem is that we've sinned against God. Now, that's not to downplay our sin against one another, but rather to uplift our sin against God. That's the issue. That even, and that even, and that even affects the way that we resolve conflict. Right? When a brother offends me that isn't sin, it ought not to be that big of a deal. But when a brother sins against me, that's a really big deal because he's ultimately sinning against God. Right? God is the focus. And so, brothers and sisters, think about the next time someone offends you or sins against you. Are you primarily disturbed by the fact that God is dishonored or that you're dishonored? Is the focus of reconciliation with another person primarily between us or is it primarily between us and God? All right, so one practical example of that in our marriage with Christine is when we sin against one another, we first ask if we've sinned against God. Because by the end of the day, our reconciliation is to serve the purpose of the reconciliation between us and God. So let's look back down and we'll read the next phrase. Through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. So how does Christ reconcile us to God? By what means does he reconcile us? Through the cross, by which he put hostility to death. I, I really like the way LEB puts that phrase. LEB says, killing the enmity, or killing the hostility in himself. Right? In himself, he himself, through his body, killed the hostility. His body hung on the cross, and on the cross, he was killing the hostility between us and God. Did you know that Jesus is a killer? Uh, not of man, but of hostility between people and the hostility between us and God. Now, if you're not a Christian, this is the main message of Christianity. If you're in middle school, if you're in high school, if you're a child here and you're not a Christian, have you ever wondered why nothing feels complete in this life? Why there's so many issues and so many problems with this life. Why things just don't work out. Why people wrong us and why we do things that are wrong when we're really trying to just get things right. Why are things like this? Things are like this because you and I live in a broken world. There's enmity, there's hostility between the world and God. It's a broken world because there isn't peace between the world and God. Even more than living in a broken world where there's a lack of peace between God and the world. Things are like this because you're not right with God. I'm not right with God. Well, I wasn't right with God. There is hostility between you and God if you're not a Christian. The relationship is broken. God is angry with you for your sins. And you and I are both sinners before God. Yet God, in his love, sends Jesus, his one and only son, reconciling us to God, Jesus, through physically hanging on the cross, kills the hostility between you and God. Jesus is a reconciler when he hangs on the cross, taking on the wrath of God, taking on our disobedience, and in turn brings peace. He brings order to the chaos. Now, God, right now, if you're not a Christian, is calling you to turn from your sins and turn to Jesus, to turn even from your perceived righteousness and turn to Jesus. Jesus is saying, come to me. Let me be your reconciler. 
Give up your own efforts and come to me. Now, going back to the Christians, when I thought about this passage this whole week, um, the image that kept coming to my mind was this. Right? On, on the hill, there's the cross. And there's two heat waves that are forcing its way to the cross. On the left side, we see God's wrath his anger towards sin, his anger towards us, it's pushing its way up to the cross. On the right side, we see our disobedience, our decentering of God, our lack of faith in God, our diminishing of God, and it's forcing its way back up to the cross. So there's these two forces that are moving its way up, and it's going to crash at the moment of the cross. And at the top, we see Jesus himself, his body hanging on the cross, his body limp. And as the forces meet, Christ reconciles us. Christ kills the hostility. Christ makes us one through his body. Through the cross, God reconciles us to Christ. That's the prevailing image that's been in my mind as I've been reading this text, is thinking about how Christ stands in the middle of these two forces coming at one another. And he is the reconciler. He first initially reconciles us, to one another with the Jews and the Gentiles. And then he reconciles this group, the Jews and the Gentiles, he rec reconciles us to Christ. That's the focal point of the hostility and our disobedience. The cross is the focal point. And so what do we do with such glorious truths? We remember, we ponder, we constantly think about this and this shapes our lives. The truth affects the way we think about our disobedience. In our disobedience, do we see Christ? Do we fall on our knees thanking God for Christ the reconciler, the killer of hostility? When there's conflict within relationships at the church, are we pondering Christ, the reconciler, the one who makes us one in his body? When we are frustrated at the brokenness of this world, do we remember Christ? Do we understand him to be our reconciler, the one who reconciles us to God and is the one who's coming to reconcile everything, to bring peace to this broken world. Brothers and sisters, we fail at this. We fail to remember Christ. We fail to look to Christ. We become short-sighted. We believe lies that are in our mind. We sin against a holy God. Yet Christ is our reconciler. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this short devotion, thinking about Christ as the one who reconciles us. Thinking about Christ as the focal point of our reconciliation. Thinking about how even our enmity is primarily against you. And, and we thank you that Christ take, takes that away. In Jesus' name, amen.